for the first time for all years. <laughs> why did uh, River State not have unanimous local government? Uh, it winner? was, it was, why did it it was a wonder. It should be called the tenth ah, wonder of the world. It's a tenth wonder. <laughs> Lost one local government? I've never heard it before. Because mm -hmm. what we know about local government is they don't even lose one councillor. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that bad. So it, it, it goes to show that there is no independent uh, election when it comes to local government in Nigeria. We are going to be taking a dive into local government autonomy in Nigeria. A lot of matters arising and we sort of want to get into it. Uh, for some context. Now, after Nigeria um, celebrated the Supreme Court's judgment on LG autonomy, much concerns have been raised about the role that state governors would play in frustrating local government autonomy implementation. But let's get um, straight into it. So there's been a lot, you know, since that Supreme uh, court judgment about the local government autonomy. You know, a lot of people rejoiced. There were a lot of reactions, really. Some were happy that this was happening. Even the federal government was like, this is a, this is a win for democracy and all of that. Um, but then again, some people felt like, okay, is this not another way of you now exercising direct control over the local government? So much was said. But really, let, let's even start from that judgment. Um, since that judgment and the, the things that have been happening, what, what do you think is happening here? Okay, uh, since that judgment, of course, there has been a fluster of activities by, by governors to conduct local government elections yes. so that they don't suffer the penalty of, uh, of not. not having monies directly apportioned to them from the, from the pulse of the yeah. federal treasury. So. That, that has happened, it has made the governors take this as a reality. But again, I've seen situations where governors are now trying to sabotage and circumvent even the very judgment of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. There's a section 7.1 of our constitution which allows state, the, the state government to actually pass laws to regulate local governments. It's a constitutional power by the state government. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether the Supreme Court gave a decision or not. It can still be circumvented. Yeah. So what the National Assembly can do is not to back from their high horse at the state governors. You see, a lot of things that uh, appear simplistic sometimes to, to every other person is not as simple as that. First, it's perfectly possible that a lawyer represented one party and the other party wasn't represented by a lawyer. Usually, we don't know what happened in the courtrooms. That's number one. Number two, it is perfectly possible that a good lawyer represented one party and the other party wasn't represented by a good lawyer. The job of a judge is to be unbiased and favor the person with the best arguments. Whether good it's unfortunately bad. so. Whether the it's job, against the fact the that job, against the law. The job of a, of a lawyer is to argue the side of the case of his client to the best of his capacity. And it is the argument that is presented before a court that a court is supposed to be swayed by. Under no condition should the judge take the role of a lawyer or under almost no condition should the judge take the role of a lawyer. I learned that at the, at, the, at the High Court, after there was an attempt to settle the Fubara faction and the Wiki faction, the Fubara faction withdrew their case after listening to the president. They withdrew the argument they had against what the Wiki faction had. You know what happened? The UK people did not withdraw their argument. They did not withdraw their case. And in law, if you withdraw in that kind of situation or you don't present a defense in that kind of situation, they it lost. means that you have admitted what the other party is alleging. Is alleging. And if you lose your case at the, at, the, at, the, at the high court based on that and at the court of appeal based on that, 
your guess is as good as mine when it comes to what the ultimate decision will be. And it is unfortunately so. So if at the end of the day, the decision comes in one way or another, and the society is totally appalled by the, by the judgment, it is not the fault of the judge or the judex, as the case may be. It's just the process. It is just the process, the agreed process, the legal process that we have all agreed to before now should be the case. It doesn't matter how preposterous the eventual outcome eventually uh, comes out to be. Does, does a governor have the right, or does a state government have the right to suspend a sitting local government chairman, maybe SOPS, maybe someone who was elected, democratically elected into that position. Is there any explanation in the constitution that allows that to happen? Because it did happen in Lagos, so I want to know. Okay, does, we must always remember that the American constitution is one small document that can be put in the back of the pocket. So, and the total laws that they have can actually almost feel this studio, given, mm. with, with this, given the huge and gigantic size of this studio. The constitution too, the Nigerian constitution, is just one small document with about 318 to 326, 318 sections, and of course a number of schedules. So it means it's a very tiny document. So what it does is it gives as little law as possible, as little regulation as possible, but it now gives other people power to make to more laws to regulate. Okay. What that means is that the constitution doesn't contain this, but potentially, because of the provisions of section 7.1 of our constitution that gives the governors the right to actually make laws that will guide the administration of local governments. Potentially, various laws, various local government laws in states can actually have such provisions. So if it has such provisions under various local government laws for various states, then the governor, pursuant to such provisions, can actually go ahead to suspend uh, the local government chairman or caretaker in government, in caretaker uh, uh, person. Yeah, so if that is not the case, if it is not in such uh, local government laws, mm. then such a person can say, sorry, Mr. Governor, whatever it is that you have done is unlawful and I'm challenging it. And of course, they are also entitled to, to various reliefs, post one to uh, extant laws. You may say they are non-functional, <laughs> the local governments, but there is a three, uh, 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 three tier of government, government yeah. in this country, and our constitution supports that, and it must function like that. So, what are the reforms but that do we, we must really have, in place? You, you see, see, Mr. Emmanuel, till now, I've not changed from being a year two constitutional law <laughs> student to now. I still feel we just have to. to so, why not call it so? So, you're saying the concept of local government autonomy I is, is an illusion. It. Mm. I've always been saying it as a student, as a first, as an introduction person into, into the uh, constitutional law class. It's just a joke to me. So, are you saying we should reform our constitution to just see, leave out this local see, government? See, I'm not even saying that. I'm saying that if indeed we want three tiers of government, the, same, the federal government must be able politically to take care of section 7 of our constitution pursuant to section 9 of our constitution the powers of governors over the amendment of the constitution proper amendment of the constitution to make the local government truly autonomous we can't run away from it so long as we have section 7 1 on our constitution there is no way to, there, you, we can't, we can't, you can't pull out any genius. You can't pull out any rat out, uh, rabbit out of your, out of your heart by saying you are going to the Supreme Court to use the Supreme Court to, 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 to do what only a proper constitutional amendment can do. We've come to accept, you know, that most of the, the, the elections that were held um, were won by, by the same party. 
of the state government. I think with the exception of Rivers, who for... <laughs> we, with the exception... And we clearly understood what happened there, why, why it was so. Um, so what, what's your judgment of elections that have been conducted so far? Is it to be expected that that's the way it should go? Because in many ways, like you said, you know, many of these local government chairmen still pledge their allegiance. You know, they have to be loyal to the powers that be but what's your your personal judgment on elections that have been held so far i, I saw that uh, for the first time in local government elections this year for the first time for all years <laughs> why did uh, river state not have unanimous local government uh, it was it was, it, it was a wonder it should be called the 10th ah, wonder it's, it's of the tenth world wonder. <laughs> <laughs> lost one local government I've never heard it before. I was, I was almost totally disappointed in the, because what we know about local government is they don't even lose one councillor. Mm. So it's, it's that bad. So it, it goes to show that there is no independent uh, election when it comes to local government in Nigeria. And that also goes to show the fear that, legitimate fear that some people exercise when they talk about state police. Okay. Imagine if there was state police, what would have happened to the Edo State election, for example? Mm. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, it would have really, it would have really gone all right, and maybe there would not have been the relative peace that, mm. that was enjoyed in that election, and maybe in subsequent elections, because of the unanimity and the emperor, emperor kind of style that, that the governors exercise when it comes to the little power some, sometimes that they enjoy pursuant to, to the constitution. So I'm really not happy with the way local government elections go in Nigeria because it is very obviously not democratic. Because if it were democratic, what happened? For example, in Lagos State, it was Labour Party that won the presidential, presidential election. And just just wait for the local government elections, and Labour Party will probably not even win one councillorship. He goes, to, he beats all 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 forms of logic. PDP had some strongholds in Lagos State. PDP has strongholds in in other places. Mm -hmm. Opposition parties have strongholds, and we just somehow miraculous, miraculously uh, happened that. Local government chairman, it now looks like they don't even have as much stronghold to be able to win a, a, a grain of sand it. when it comes to when it comes to elections. So it beats, it defies logic completely, and I think that that should be should be rewound. Maybe that maybe we have started with the miracle, the tenth wonder in River State, and we pray that uh, <laughs> it starts spreading too. It's, it's very, very unfortunate and so, so disheartening for me as a lover of democracy. Mm. Now, states that sort of, um, um, states that are not able to meet the October deadline for holding local government elections, do you think they should be allowed to receive funds? It's going to be a hard one for me because <laughs> we've had it, uh, even though it eventually was pronounced unconstitutional, we had it in, in Lagos states at the time where the funds of Lagos State was, was withheld uh, because of something like this. Yes. Because of, you know, Basanjo said, mm -hmm. thinking there was no full compliance with the, with the local government uh, provisions in the Constitution. Maybe funds will be withheld again until eventually they conduct okay. elections, I, even though I'm not really happy and satisfied with that, but that eventually might be what will, what will happen. But I urge all governors to comply with the provisions of, of uh, the decision of the Supreme Court because so long as we, we do that, we remain a country ruled by law. And if we do not do that, it means that we are, we are in contravention of a subsisting judgment of of the Supreme Court and anybody that contravenes, maybe their funds should be should be should be withheld yeah, and no. unfortunately so because if they are given it means that they are encouraging we're encouraging a defiance of the judgment of our apex court. And I think that that should be seriously, seriously discouraged. Mm.